back YouTubers to my channel of an everyday life of an SB. If you're following me right now, I'm SB Ansel or I'm SB for short for many of you if you don't know me. I'm all about creating mental health and awareness versus sharing your look guys, my life story with Asperger's syndrome and the light that comes with the, these diagnoses that comes under that umbrella as well as also just getting to know me as a person under these amounts of diagnoses because as I stated real clearly, I can't stress it enough, but basically people with autism and Asperger's syndrome are all very different and how they go about their living lives like anybody else and that hopefully when you get to know me as a person maybe some of it may ring true if you've got a loved one a parent or whoever that has these maybe similar symptoms and whatnot that with the tips and advice that of my management of it or what have you will be basically of help to you and beneficial to you but in all further ado guys basically in saying that just bear in mind that I have made a book and it's available on Amazon right now about my life journey with Asperger's syndrome so far, life of an Aspie, looking into everyday life of Asperger's syndrome. So if you feel want to, you know, learn more about it, hopefully some of this, you know, book will be of, of use to you as well as these videos that I'm sharing with you. So no further ado, also just to be in mind also that um, I'm trying to complete up the ADHD and series versus the dyslexia and series and whatnot. So hopefully that you guys can follow step by step of whatever is missing in those playlist things before hopefully she what what's been I'm playing on my mind for a while but I'm not sure how I'm going to address it it's just a matter of just you know hopefully putting it not too technical for you all to understand so in all for the do guys basically you may have heard already some of the you know topics that I have addressed so far but some of it as I said bear in mind that may be repetitive but I humbly apologize in advance because some of it maybe it can be used as a gentle reminder for us all when dealing with people with different you know diagnoses as well as just basically coming in the territory of whatever else it may be also to bear in mind though also that I am hoping to be a mentor advocate for the ones that need someone to be you know listen that just by giving you guys pills of wisdom and encouragement and to enlighten you all and support you all and hopefully to let you guys know that you're not alone regardless of the everyday struggles you may go through so this one's basically before I run out of time to begin this is obviously they're going to be called ADHD and procrastination in adults. As we know, basically procrastination can happen at any age. You know, re left un untreated maybe. Sometimes many people may argue that it's good to basically just procrastinate over certain small things and whatnot. But I know some of us may procrastinate because some of us will be able to work under pressure and all that. And sometimes the worst thing to you, we can do while we're progressing is do nothing so hopefully when this is happening however you know with this procrastination another reason maybe is because some of us may become too overwhelmed or to the point we don't know where to begin of all these everyday tasks that are thrown at us in our busy schedule of the day whatever the reason we know that sometimes procrastination can have its benefits and you know disadvantages over certain things and also it can be a stress inducing habit the can leader should be more broken into obviously some strategies here especially for people that I'm addressing here of with ADHD okay especially in adults so if you have adult ADHD if, and if you haven't done this yet about how to diagnose adult ADHD please comment below so maybe I can actually add this to something to research and further for you how to you know diagnose it is you probably notice that you progress more than others like in general that are just normal every beings such behavior can cause problems in personal relationships as well as in the workforce you know of where you're working and when we seek to you know fail to complete the task at time on time or others may see see it you know for for people that are ADHD sufferers I just don't like using that word but I humbly apologize in advance that others may see it as a sign of disrespect, incompetent, or just pure, utterly lazy. Because procrastination is obviously essentially a mindset, cognitive kind of behavior techniques, obviously will help certain, you know, chronic procrastinators over time break this habit. If even if you are putting off something off for days, weeks, months, maybe some of these time management tips for people with ADHD will be of help to you. So here goes tip number one do something fun first as we know sometimes as i said before nobody would want to basically do certain you know everyday tasks that's just really boring for us regardless what it may be in our everyday lives you know 
sometimes I've noticed that people with ADHD especially you know will find it helpful to do something they may love first so that it can wing them in to get into that mood to do the least enjoyable tasks that work them into them that they just don't like doing in the first place so maybe any certain stimulating activity that they'll enjoy will do the trick for them some ideas may want to play basketball or you know some computer games others may want to just dance around take a bubble bath but then again just a rule of thumb here is maybe set a timer for maybe 15 to 20 minutes. I know it sounds professional to make sure you don't get too absorbed in the fun activity or else you may be forgetting all these un really necessary tasks that need to be done. As I said before, there are ways to actually overcome procrastination and whatnot. And I have already done it, the general procrastination basically on these tips and advice. So I recommend you guys to check that out if you really want to know more. Tip number two, obviously, is creating the right environment for you while you're, you know, working around and working around with people. Because obviously, as we know, sometimes, you know, nine times out of ten, if we're with the wrong people, you know, we tend to, you know, get weighed down with a lot of things. So, as we know, people with ADHD, however, are of the more productive and maybe an unconventional surrounding. Instead of wearing implants and ensure the science. Some of the people with ADHD may find it easier to get work done while listening to real loud music. Uh, the hand, that depends on the person, obviously, also, and just general normal everyday people. If you work best under pressure, but still turn in projects late or exhaust yourself by pulling out all all nighters, maybe another tip here is to set your iron deadline for completing portions, as I said before. For me, especially, I'm all about writing down the, the lists. And like me, probably people with ADHD and similar people like me, maybe do lists, the to do list, check it off as you go, check out maybe on the calendar if you've got a calendar ahead of you to know when's the next, you know, assignment is due and what have you. Maybe also basically another one is, you know, this will show you obviously when you have certain deadlines you're giving yourself as well as having visual imagery of your calendar or what have you beside you, basically you know, you can finish each portion obviously on time, all the time. You can also basically take ADHD medications if it's generally best to schedule difficult tasks for you when you're sort of fully covered up and really down and dealt with. Tip number three is don't beat yourself up. Many people that have suffers from ADHD, obviously when they procrastinate, they tend to beat themselves up. It's not just people with ADHD, however. We tend to do it nine times out of ten, you know, do it all the time, most of us. I'm guaranteeing that, you know, you guys do it because I'll admit I'm one of them. I usually beat myself up when something is, you know, due and it's like, you know, thinking, hello, what am I supposed to be doing? You know, I can do better than that, you know. Sometimes also, basically, the key thing to remember is though, we tend to forget that sometimes the if we're in the wrong place or wrong people, that that will just drain out at the positive vibes we may have had for ourselves, and then it just creates negative vibes, obviously. And on that hand of note, basically, that can actually you know affect us in a way of progressing on of how we want to you know either a succeed an assignment or what have you. So obviously, key number rule here is avoid any self negative talk, basically. And maybe, just as I said, send, your, send ourselves some positive feedback and realistic messages. What I do usually, or what I used to do, especially when I was studying, I used to have certain quotes and stuff up and on top, above me, you know, above my study wall to help me go through the day, obviously. And um, obviously, you know, at that point, I felt that kind of helped me get through it all, as well as just some other stuff that can create those positive vibes and stuff instead of thinking negativity. I know it's easier said than done for some people that wants that negative vibe versus their negative thinking. But it's all in the power of the mind how we go about it, obviously. Okay, bear in mind though, instead of saying maybe this will take forever for me to complete it and it's so late already, maybe it's actually saying something like this. I might not be able to finish this today, but I can do the first two steps within maybe the th next 30 minutes. The messages you're sending yourself when you complete a task, however, can be a powerful deterrent to determine your future con this, you know, procrastinations, if there's any. They can also diminish any guilt that 
obviously the certain procrastinators often feel about themselves or having missed appointments in the past or having to turn in their work that doesn't mesh up to their ability. Tip number four, just do it. As we know, action speaks better than words. Obviously we need to know at hand, you know, how much we can afford to do things, you know. Sometimes we just need to start up a task that is either important or least important regardless how you look at it. Even if it is done poorly in the first place to make it easier for us to follow through. The sooner the better we actually act upon it, you know, we should be basically able to find ourselves avoiding something that is, you know, stopping us to get out and do this. Sometimes we need to take that first sloppy step to actually make that progress step. If you need to write something down, basically, like most people probably would like to set themselves that are is a reminder, maybe for example, start typing random letters on the page. It may seem gibberish at first, but it will no longer have to be while you're looking at a blank page hours and hours on end when you didn't even know where to begin. <coughs> Tip number five, take one step at a time. This is crucial obviously for many people with ADHD or just people in general that procrastinate. However, as I said before, that if we had some larger assignments to do, we can break it into smaller ones, you know, smaller tasks. The smaller steps ain't always about, you know, how intimidating. And this can facilitate on where to start from and where to finish. Sometimes what I do when I break down into those small tasks, as I said before, I might focus on what's the one that's closest to the time to finish beforehand. Sometimes I might do some assignments way back in the past when I started doing all this preparation, organisation, Basically, for me, what I've learned in intermediate when I started doing this type pull was basically that you know, if there was a, like an example, an assignment that was due two weeks' time, I'll break that down a little bit more. And then, if there's a, another assignment that's probably just due in maybe three days' time, figure out which is the one most important, or we'll just alternate between the two and making sure to have, like I said before, a 30 minute break in between. and of like maybe a, after that 30 minute, before that 30 minute or during the 30 minute stage of your break, have something to just distract you for a while so that your mind isn't constantly over that same thing, type topic or subject that's needed to be done in the first place. You, you know, we know Rome wasn't built in a day, however, you know, when it comes down to it also, you know, so it's okay to start when we can and where we can. If a project can't be completed basically over several days, maybe trying to find a way to keep your momentum up by focusing on the next step that is doable in that particular project you, you may be doing. Maybe for this you can write a little step for yourself basically on a sticky note and then post it within hindsight in your light of line of where you can see it, be it on a mirror, be it in the toilet or whatever. <laughs> may sound ridiculous but it does work. Put it on your blinders and focus on this step rather than on the next task as a whole. Okay, maybe you need to know when to you know put a stop to it. <laughs> when that's done, move on to the next step in the same manner. Before you know it, you, you'll be completely done. Okay, also a tip here if you want to do this is if you need external pressure to stick to a task, maybe enlist a body double. Meaning that maybe you can find someone that can help you with your studies, you know, with you quietly when you're working on a boring truth. Like I said, two heads are better than one. Just working as a team basically can result in to get things done quicker and faster and smarter. When you have different people's you know, opinions or different food for thoughts on these things when you're working together as a team, basically you'll get to understand each other maybe more and hopefully that in no time again you'll get the job done because obviously sometimes it's okay to ask for help when needed so that's why you know you have maybe a classmate to help you out it's not to the point that they'll do, do the work for you but in a way maybe to guide you through some strategies they do to help prevent you and them from their procrastination and whatnot so this basically was a quick short overview of ADHD and procrastination and adults who would like for thumbs up for support Comment below if there's anything I missed in this because obviously there's going to be more of this later on of the ADHD and procrastination and how to beat it. It will be a real short brief overview probably as said you know in this one so I humbly apologise if it will sound familiar or not. Yep. 
so, you know, support me by, you know, subscribing to my channel if you haven't done so. Feel free to message me on Facebook or Twitter, SB Azul, or even direct message me on YouTube. Feel free to share these videos around to family and friends to help support them. And all further ado, guys, love, do what you love, what you, love what you do. Until next time, have a great day and I'll see you all soon.